So what, what you have seen uh, now between the, the first uh, presentation I gave about anthropometric uh, measurements and uh, targets uh, is how to deform the body. So now, um, what people do so when they generate anthropometry at this stage, uh, mostly work with uh, external uh, measurements on the body. So now this makes sense uh, for the user, so that's what you want to do. Maybe it's good for uh, kinematics uh, analysis, so it's uh, good enough to know the dimension of a leg. Um, but there are some issues. So if you have seen uh, in Thomas' presentation, for example, uh, when you deform a leg just based uh, on the external shape of the leg, so for example, based on the circumference, uh, there will be an effect of the BMI, not only on the skin, um, the muscles, but also on the bones. And uh, so you don't want, uh, for crash test simulation, you don't want to have bones uh, that are larger uh, if uh, the subject that you are putting uh, in your car has a, an higher BMI. So now, uh, in Piper, so as you have seen now, there is the option to scale separately uh, the bones and the rest of the body. So the question is, so how do we get the data to drive uh, this transformation? So we already discussed uh, the anthropometric measurements, so the external bit um, of the body. So uh, uh, this talk now, uh, this part of the talks, uh, is going to uh, discuss how we can link uh, the external measurements and the internal measurements. So how could we do that? So if we look at what exists in the literature or, or available publicly, so uh, there are statistical shape models available, uh, but the uh, issue is that uh, the data is relatively sparse and also it's uh, often limited uh, to some part of the body. So you might have uh, data for the uh, lower limb, for example, the legs, but uh, it's not linked uh, with data for the head and the thorax. So we could use um, uh, 3D landmarks uh, on the internal and external shapes, but uh, this is more local. Or we could, use, uh, we could use only the anthropometric measurement. So now, what we have here, we have uh, the opportunity to, to use uh, data that has been uh, made available uh, to us by uh, project partners, so by CSER. And uh, the advantage is that we have access to a um, database of CT scans uh, of subjects that are uh, full-bodied. And uh, so we can use uh, this source of data uh, to generate uh, anthropometric information relating uh, external shape of the body and the bony shape. So how do we do that uh, in Piper, or rather what are the efforts that we have been uh, putting and are putting into that. Uh, so the first, uh, there are two approaches, if you can remember ABC, so the A approach. Uh, this is probably uh, uh, the most ambitious one, and this is to work uh, at the with the SSM, so statistical shape model of the body, but instead of working with only parts of the body, it's working with the at the full body level. Uh, so now we have uh, data available, uh, that will be shared with uh, the community uh, to do this. Uh, for the data, so we have the scan uh, that will be shared too, and we have uh, tools to do the segmentation and correspondence, and some of the data is already available. I'll come back to that. So now, in terms of uh, landmark-driven uh, um, uh, information, uh, so this is again uh, at the full body level, and uh, so this is uh, the main approach that we are going uh, to deliver uh, at the end of the project, which is soon. And uh, so we have the software uh, to uh, generate uh, the information based on uh, a principal component analysis. And the data comes from the same uh, PMHS uh, scan from CSER, and um, landmarks are manually uh, identified uh, on the landmarks, uh, on the CT scan, sorry. So now this is for the B approach. So this is most ambitious. This is what's going to be delivered. And then the C, it's something that is uh, kind of uh, simple, but that is uh, actually uh, already possible to do probably. 
And uh, so, as uh, mentioned by Thomas, uh, it's possible to do uh, scaling uh, separately for the external shape of the body and for the bone. And so one option would be to, for example, uh, to change the height of your uh, model. And then you scale everything for a uh, median value of the BMI. So you deform everything and then you fix uh, the dimension of your skeleton. So you know that the dimension of the skeleton corresponds to a mean subject. And then what you do, then you change the BMI, but you preserve the dimension of your skeleton. So this is not uh, implemented in the GUI and so on, but this is something that uh, in some ways capability that is already available uh, by using Piper. So now the thing that we are going to deliver, so it's ongoing, so we are uh, posing uh, today uh, this work by being here in some way. So now for the uh, SSM, uh, so we have been uh, doing some uh, pilot or uh, evaluation uh, quite extensive evaluation uh, of this approach. Uh, so we have, for example, uh, 25, 25 um, uh, CT scans that have been uh, segmented uh, for the thorax and the lower limb, so not entirely for the full body, so not the head and not the, the arm, not the feet. So now, we stopped this approach, or not because uh, it didn't work, but uh, in terms of uh, time to obtain the data, and also in terms of uh, the precision or, let's say, reproducibility quality uh, of the data. Uh, this is not something uh, that is um, a really uh, an handicap uh, for the approach. This is more, uh, let's say, in the organizational uh, organization of the, of the project that we had to, uh, let's say, freeze uh, this approach. But uh, everything, so for this more ambitious uh, approach uh, will be available uh, to the community and that is something that uh, can be restarted or continued after the end of the project in the sense that everything, so the software, uh, data, landmark including for these things is uh, made uh, publicly available with the uh, appropriate licenses in such a way that it can be reused. So what do we do in terms of SSM? So we'll release, uh, let's say, a toolbox, so this will not be integrated into the Piper tools uh, in the form of modules and so on. So what does the toolbox do? So uh, we have the data that has been uh, segmented uh, semi-automatically, which means that uh, the meshes are already in correspondence. So if you look at the sternum, for example, all the sternum have the same number of nodes and they are correspond about uh, same number of points uh, correspond to the same um, item uh, on the body. So we have, as I said, uh, 25 CT scans that have been segmented uh, with this approach so far that will be released. Uh, this has been done by using Anatoreg, uh, which is a tool that has been developed uh, on the edge of Piper uh, for the um, uh, purpose of doing this segmentation. And uh, how does it work? So we use a reference model uh, uh, that has been manually segmented on a CT scan, and then we deform uh, all the CT scan that we want to segment uh, onto the reference model. This gives us uh, the segmentation uh, for the meshes of the uh, CT scan of which we want uh, anthropometric information. So now why don't we use this uh, for the full uh, body? So first, uh, this is limited to the thorax and the lower limb at this stage. Also, the, the meshes are a bit uh, too fine uh, for the deformation. This is more than what we want. So, for example, for the pelvis, there are 52,000 nodes. Uh, there may be also local default like that, and, uh, but otherwise, uh, it works well. So now, how does it work in practice? So I'm going to go relatively quickly, but just to give you an idea of uh, the maybe the novelty of what we have done uh, and will be delivered. So we have uh, what we do when we do the statistical shape model. So we align um, the, the bones of the skeletons. And uh, so we do this bone by bone, or we do it um, by groups of bones. Uh, for example, uh, if you look um, to the part of the thoracic cage of five subjects, uh, we can, or oh, user can uh, choose uh, to link uh, the one vertebra to two ribs. 
and so can consider that this is one component uh, of the body, even if there are three different bones. So now if you look at uh, nine bones for each subject, so you can uh, combine them into three subgroups of bones. And then, so when I say that uh, we do alignment bone by bone, it would be taking uh, the first segment here on the five subjects, we align them, so we put them together in such a way that the relative distance is as small as possible. So we do this for the first set, second set, third set, so we get three elements like this. And then on those, we can evaluate the mean of the shape because all the meshes have the same number of bones, the, the nodes correspond, of nodes, sorry, the nodes correspond to the same feature, more or less. Then we obtain the mean, the variance of these shapes, and some standard deviation. So next step, uh, what we can do then, uh, if we look at uh, these uh, models, so that are statistical, um, so we can um, for recombine the modes of the changes of the shapes of the bones compared to their mean, and then for each time we change the combination of the modes. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention something. So when we evaluate the, the variance here, it's very important. So uh, the variance is, so we do the alignment bone by bone, but the, the variance evaluated for the full body. So we put uh, all the bones together, and then uh, we evaluate the variance for everything, which means that uh, if you get uh, a femur becoming larger, it's likely that your ribs are going to become larger at the same time. So we sample uh, among these modes of variance, and then each time we get uh, a new uh, sample skeleton. And in practice, what we need to do then is reassemble the bones that we have aligned together in such a way that there were not too much distance between them. So we can realign uh, a skeleton. So what we had before, so we had the predictors, so BMI, stature, and so on, that gave us anthropometric measurements. So the trick here is to look at the anthropometric measurements that correspond more or less uh, to skeletal uh, measurements. So for example, if you look at the stature of somebody, it doesn't change what your BMI is. Uh, it will always be from um, uh, a point on your head uh, to a point on your feet. So now, important is that these measurements they are done in a particular posture. And so what we do when we sample a skeleton, uh, we just uh, reposition it uh, in the position that was used to make the anthropometric measurements in the database that we are using. And so what we need to do then, so for PC scores, we get skeleton, we can put the skeleton in a given sh posture, and then we can evaluate the anthropometric measurements. So we have some target measurements that we get from the anthropometric measurement, just the, the ones that correspond mostly to the dimension of the skeleton. And then what we do, we uh, iterate to find the PC score, so the actual skeleton among the samples, that matches as best as possible the anthropometric dimensions we want to match. So this has been tested, so for example, on a statistical shape model using 22 subjects. So quickly, what we did, we took another subject from the database that we had uh, segmented, and then we look at the anthropometric dimension, the skeletal anthropometric dimension of this additional subject, and then we use this technique to sample among the set of 22 other subjects, what would be a good shape. And actually, so we obtain, uh, you can see that the, there are two different uh, sets. Um, the actual uh, model that was projected into uh, this uh, database or SSM, and the actual S um, uh, the, the projection and the actual model. And they are very close, actually. So there are differences in the position of the patella. So in this case, uh, yeah, so there were tr three segments. This is a test for the lower limb. So we get the pelvis as a single bone, femur as a single bone, and then here there are four bones, as I explained, you can combine bones together. So the patella, um, tibia, fibula, and the talus, because we didn't reassemble, articulate these points. And so some differences for the patella, but globally uh, this corresponds to the dimension that you would expect uh, to use uh, for, I mean, it would be good to use for crash uh, simulation. So now, so for the SSM scaling, so we have good feasibility. So we are going to deliver uh, the, um, uh, the tools, uh, the models, uh, the it will be possible so to uh, reassemble uh, the skeleton in a given posture, and then to use uh, techniques to evaluate uh, the actual uh, PC scores. So this is ready to be reused, and we hope to be able to produce uh, more results later. 
So now the landmark approach that will be um, delivered also uh, is uh, this is used um, uh, based on landmarks. So what is done is uh, using some uh, developed uh, tools uh, within Slicer to accelerate the process. Um, so about 400 landmarks are getting measured manually uh, on the CT scans. And a rough segmentation of the body of the skeleton will also be made available. So now what we do then, uh, we use the tools that we already have developed uh, working with the SSM or different uh, statistical tools that we developed. And then we adapt them uh, to uh, do a PCA uh, based on uh, the landmarks, but also on anthropometric dimensions uh, of, the, um, of the CT scan, of the subject that have been uh, uh, um, scanned. Uh, some of the tools also are circumferences. So for example, for the femur, um, the, the shaft of the femur, so you would like to have the circumference that is correct, so we include uh, circumferences uh, into this PCA. And then we evaluate um, a principal component model, uh, and then again we optimize the scores in such a way that we match uh, some of the uh, predictors or that we want to. Um, yes, so this is uh, something that is ongoing. So then we generate the targets uh, for the deformation within the Piper tools. And so this is done uh, by the prediction of combination of anthropometric measurements. So we get the external anthropometric measurements and we get the landmarks that define the internal measurements uh, for the skeleton. Uh, how do we apply it then in practice? So the, the way it is done is that you start from uh, your existing uh, HBM uh, we evaluate the posture of your existing HBM and then we reposition the sample landmarks in the same position as the actual uh, ABM that you want to deform. So this has been tested, so this is similar uh, to what has been shown uh, previously. So this is looking at uh, anthropometric measurements that we obtain from the anthropometric database. And these are uh, landmarks uh, that are used uh, to deform the body and uh, including for the um, uh, skeleton. And so uh, this is original model. Uh, these are uh, targets and um, uh, original um, circumference, uh, position of landmarks, and so on. This is the preview of the deformed body, and this is the actual deformed body. So this seems to be working. So now, as a conclusion, so we have a different approach that we have been or we are uh, uh, pursuing. And uh, so they seem to be working uh, for the SSM. So this will be in some way restarted, but um, with more data. And uh, also uh, we'll need to make uh, more tests uh, to see how the actual deformation works, uh, uh, both for the SSM, landmarks, and so on. Uh, yeah, so this is what the status of the deformation for ex internal and external uh, anthropometric uh, dimensions. That's it, thanks. Mm-hmm. <coughs>